You've had several things that have been happening in Palestine uh, in the last couple of days, right? You had the Israelis that were storming the uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is the third holiest site uh, in Islam. And remember, right now, Muslims are, are uh, you know, they're celebrating the, the holy month of Ramadan. So, uh, you know, while people are inside praying, the Israelis have been coming in, throwing tear gas, uh, d destroying uh, a timeless building. I mean, just look at... Just look at look at this over here. This is quite this is quite egregious, honestly. Look how they've destroyed priceless history. Right? The windows, the doors. And and of course, you know, tear gassing Muslims. And then the media call these clashes, right? So you have one side using rubber bullets, uh, uh tear gas, arresting people while they're praying, and then they call that a clash. For the past couple of days, they've been doing this multiple times. So they didn't just go into the mosque once. They've even been arresting people outside. Look, look here, they're arresting uh, somebody who's praying outside the mosque for, for no reason. And of course, they're attacking women, right? So uh, all these defenders of women's rights in the West who, who claim to be champions of, of uh, equality, they're silent. Because it's Palestinian women being attacked by Israelis. And they don't care, right? Because they, 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 they're not the right skin color, I suppose. <laughs> Just, you know, treating them like dirt. Treating them like dirt. Here you can see how the children uh, in, inside the, the Qibli prayer hall in the mosque are struggling to breathe because of the tear gas. And, and, and I'll, I'll get to the marches as well, because at the same time, while, while all of this has been happening, you, you've had these uh, Jewish settlers. If you're a Jewish settler in Palestine, you will have protection with you. The police, the so-called police, let's just call them what they are, the Israeli occupation forces will come and accompany you. And so that means if they see any Palestinians around, they will shove them out the way, kick them out the way because, to protect you because you're considered superior to the Palestinian. So you have a bunch of settlers who say, you know what, let's go and march next to the mosque just to, just to, to provoke the Palestinians because if we go marching next to the mosque, it's guaranteed that the security forces, the occupation forces will come with us and then they will kick all the Palestinians out. Right, so this is what you see, basically, this kind of discrimination. Uh, and they do this on purpose, right? They, they organize these things on purpose, these, these uh, settler marches. And um, it's, it's nothing but provocation. They, they go I I specifically where the Palestinians are, uh, knowing full well that they'll be kicked out with them, right? And this is nothing new. Uh, if, if I give you the example of, of, of Hebron, uh, the, the city Hebron, or uh, Khalil in Arabic, you, you have something ridiculous, like um, 800 Jewish settlers versus, I think, I can't remember the figure, it's like 100,000 plus Palestinians. So, so it's an extremely tiny minority, but they basically rule the city because they, they, there are troops there who do nothing but protect them. And of course, it's apartheid, right? They treat the Palestinians like crap on their own land. And the, the Jewish settlers are superior and they have, uh, you know, they can do whatever they want under the protection of, uh, of uh, you know, the, these these thugs with their uh, with their riot gear, their machine guns, and so on. So this is at the mosque. You can see what they're doing here. The the Israelis. You know, firing tear gas and so on. Like it's a shooting range. You know, it's a game. It's a game. I I would love to see. Can, can you imagine the reaction if Palestinians were, were going into a synagogue and shooting tear gas at, at people while they're praying? C can you imagine the reaction in the West? They would rightfully be outraged. But when it happens to Muslims, no one cares, right? And it's not even just Muslims. Even Palestinian Christians, they're blocking them from going, because uh, we have Easter right now, blocking them from going to, to pray. And then you have these kinds of marches. This is what I'm talking about, these flag marches. <laughs> And, and I'm, not, I'm not kidding when I say this, you have them chanting things like death to Arabs, which again, I'm not surprised, right? They were doing this last year, the year before, and so on. This is, this is really nothing new. Um, and so because of all this tension last year in May 2021, you remember what happened, 
a war broke out, literally a war when Israel started bombing Gaza because, uh, because of this behavior, th this, this, these provocations by Jewish settlers uh, trying to kick Palestinians out of their homes in Sheikh Jarrah, trying to evict them, right? And, and attacking people at Damascus Gate, attacking them at Al-Aqsa Mosque, inside the mosque. And then Hamas fired a rocket. And then in response, the Israelis bombed Gaza for 11 days. They killed 240 Palestinians, 2,000 wounded. And there's, there's a lot of tension right now that you're going to have another war breaking out. And so what, what ended up happening, Hamas fired rockets without killing anyone, just as a show of force. And then in response, the Israelis bombed Gaza. Here's a video. Now again, keep in mind, uh, when we're talking about Gaza, Gaza is a tiny strip. It's, it's literally called the Gaza Strip. It's, um, it's one of the most densely populated places on Earth. The unemployment rate, the youth unemployment rate is, is astronomical. There's no clean drinking water. It's, it's, been, it's been nicknamed the, the world's largest open air prison because they cannot leave. It's under siege by Egypt and Israel. Uh, you know, they, they, they really have Palestinians trapped in, the, in this, this extremely densely populated place. They, they, they control everything that is imported into Gaza. Everything. I'm not, I'm not joking. So after they bomb Gaza, which they've done multiple times, they've completely destroyed it. They, the Palestinians can't rebuild because the Israelis forbid them from importing concrete. I mean, this, this treatment is, 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 uh, is really draconian and, and humiliating and barbaric. And it's bankrolled by the U.S., right? The U.S. gives the Israelis uh, $3.8 billion every year. And last year, they gave them even more. And, and look, this is, again, how they treat Palestinian women, right? Where, where are all the defenders of women's rights? Huh? What is that? And I, and I showed you the other day, they, this, this guy, he just broke a Palestinian woman's arm for no reason. There's, there's no reason whatsoever. Whatsoever. And I want to show you another example of this discrimination. Look at this. This is in the city of Yetta. 120,000 Palestinians live there. And they have a single municipal park. And this morning, so this is April 20th, 10 cars of Israeli occupation forces closed it off to residents in, in order to allow 40 Israeli settlers to go in the park. So again, did you understand what I'm saying? There are 120,000 Palestinians who live in Yetta, and the Israelis came in and, and closed off the park to all the Palestinians just so 40 Jewish settlers could go inside. And again, these, these are people who've come from, you know, Eastern Europe, from the U.S., who knows, right? Or, or their parents or grandparents. They're, they're colonizers. That, they're, that's literally it. And they, they, they send the occupation forces with them, with the guns, and give them the special treatment. And, and it's, it's straight up discrimination, straight up apartheid, right? And they tell the Palestinians to just leave, and they, they close off roads, they close off anything they like, right? They're subjecting them to, to military rule. So when you hear that, oh, there's, there are clashes in Palestine, there's no fucking clashes. Th this is a military occupation. <laughs> a guy throwing a stone after you tear gas him is not a clash. That's a guy defending himself from, from brutality. But, you know, you're not allowed to say that, of course. And look, here you had a correspondent from El Mayadi, and look how they're harassing her uh, while she's trying to film a report. And... and um, this is in Jerusalem, right? Yeah. <laughs> لم تقم هذه الشرطة بتفريقهم بتفريقهم على سبيل المثال كما. And then they tell you Israel is a democracy, right? Wow, great freedom of the press. And this, of course, is not taking into account all the journalists that they shot and and killed 
when they when they attacked Gaza. Ridiculous, Ab absolutely ridiculous. And uh, here you can see a f this is a photograph from inside the mosque, inside the prayer hall. The rubber bullets that they've shot people with. Um, and again, we went over this the other day, but nevertheless, this is these are fresh attacks, and I wanted to show you that. Uh, now, let's look at a tiny clip. This is from CNN with um, Aman Poor. She spoke to Naftali Bennett, who's the new Israeli prime minister. Let's take a look. Um, Mr. Prime Minister, you say, there I go again. Um, clearly, there's violence. We all watch it. We can see, uh, we can see what happens. But let me now quote your own, your own Israeli security people. Again, the context. The West Bank has been occupied since 1967. Settlers are allowed to... To, to be there, it is a minority, I know that, but they're there and they are violent, this minority, and it is generally deemed illegal by the rest of the world, the settlers in occupied territory. But that's a background to what I'm going to quote to you. Major General Yehuda Fuchs, who's the commander of your Israeli troops in the West Bank, is he not, Major General Yehuda Fuchs? He said in an interview with the New York Times um, that he was concerned about what he called settler terrorism and was exerting a lot of effort to avoid it. He said his job is to make sure both Israelis and Palestinians are safe. So if he says that, what is your response to that? No, what you've been projecting is blatantly false. Uh, the, why the do you say that? Overwhelming majority. <laughs> I'll tell you why I say it, because it's a, a lie, simply a lie. No, the overwhelming sir, you can't, majority you cannot of the half say million that to Israelis, me. Let, let me you finish. You cannot tell me I'm uh, lying. Christiane, Mr. I, I Prime can. Minister, I well, said well, a minority of the extremists. And, That's what I said. That's uh, what well, I it's said. it's a tiny minority. That's what I said. A tiny minority. And I, I object the uh, symmetry that uh, you're trying to create here. Because out of half no a million symmetry. I'm talking about uh, good your Israelis, own decent... De could I, could I finish the sentence, yes. uh, Christiane? Out of half a million Israelis that are decent and law-abiding Israelis living in Judea and Samaria, there's several hundred, perhaps even less, uh, uh, who uh, apply violence from time to time. But who's getting murdered? We're seeing Palestinians murder Israelis. We're not seeing Israelis murdering Palestinians. And, and that's why there's no symmetry wow. here. And I also object that these are not wow. occupied territories. They're territories in dispute. And we have claim to our own uh, uh, place as well as them. I get it. No one's going anywhere. We have to fix Territories in dispute. Yeah, just, you know, the United Nations and the whole planet view the West Bank and Jerusalem and, and the Syrian Golan Heights as occupied. And he's saying, oh, it's in dispute. No, no, it's legally, like, by definition, occupied. <laughs> it's not an opinion. It's a legal fact. But okay. And I love he says, like, oh, it, it's Israelis who are being killed. Dude, do you know, do you know how many, um, do you know what the ratio is when there's, there's a war? Uh, for example, uh, in 2014, you, you had, I think it was 50 Israelis killed. The, the majority of them soldiers, so, you, you know, uh, military forces. Right, so 2,000 Palestinians killed and, and 67 Israelis, and the majority of them are soldiers. 67 versus 2,000. And he's talking about of the recent events, right? He's talking about the shootings that you had in Tel Aviv and so on. And you had, I think, 14 Israelis killed. And the, he, he then told all the Israeli occupation forces to go on the offensive. And they went and shot dead 15 Palestinians. They shot dead a mother. They shot dead all, all, you know, all, all kinds of people that have literally nothing to do with their so-called counter-terrorism. But, but just by being Palestinian, you're, you're a terrorist, according to them. Right? So they, they, this, this is so disgusting because they've been occupying uh, Palestine for 70 years now. Overwhelming majority of the people being injured and being killed are Palestinian, and he sits there and lies about this, and he changes the subject. Right? She's talking to him about settler violence, and then he starts uh, referring to to uh, uh, to to the shootings. I mean, he didn't say it, but I know that's what he's talking about. It's quite ridiculous. Uh, and again, do you know where Naftali Bennett is from? The, the the Israeli Prime Minister. He's from the U.S. So you you have uh, an American running a colony in Palestine uh, and Palestinians are refugees, are displaced, are treated like third-rate citizens on their own land. Very nice, right? Very democratic. Don't you find this ridiculous? Every time they talk about Palestine, they say, oh, there are clashes. What, what do you mean clashes? Is it a rugby match? 
You got one side with, with, with nukes, with billions of dollars, with the full backing of the West. They're coming into a mosque and shooting people with rubber bullets and tear gas while they're praying during Ramadan. And you call that a clash. R really, I'm, I'm so angry about this because they try to both sides the issue like as if it's a level playing field. It's not a level playing field. You got one side that has nuclear weapons that gets billions of dollars from the Americans every year in military aid. And uh, the other side that is throwing rocks. And then they, they tear gas Palestinians while they're praying inside the mosque. They shoot them with rubber bullets. And then if they throw a stone back in response to defend themselves. Oh, you see, it's clashes. Oh, look, they're terrorists. Both sides need to exercise restraints. What do you mean both sides? Are you fucking blind? They're beating up journalists. They're beating up worshippers. They're beating up women. Everybody's getting whacked. They beat up this man in front of his children. Right? And, and, and he, this, this thug, he just whacks this Palestinian woman for no reason and literally breaks her arm. Where are, these all, where are all these defenders of women's rights? Where are all these champions of feminism? Where's your outrage? Huh? The, the women in Palestine, they're not good enough for you? These women, they're Muslim and Arab, so they don't matter. Do you know how insulting that is to walk into a holy place while people are praying in Ramadan, beat them up, handcuff them, throw tear gas? That building's been there for, for it's timeless, for thousands of years, and they smash the windows open like it's a Toyota or some car. I mean, this is the second year in a row that they do this, and last year a war broke out because of it. Can you imagine if Palestinians were coming into a synagogue and tear gassing people while they're praying? The whole planet would be outraged. And they will be right to be outraged. So where's the outrage here? Why, why this double standard? It's not clashes. It's not both sides. It's one side oppressing the other. And again, I don't know who needs to hear this, but when you walk into a mosque and you shoot people with rubber bullets, that's not a clash. That's brutality. That's oppression. And they're acting like it's a rugby match or something, right? And when they do this, they're covering up Israeli crimes. Make no mistake, when, when the media, when the Western governments, they say that, these are clashes and both sides need to, you know, need to exercise restraint. They're actively covering up Israeli crimes. They're acting like it's a level playing field. It's not a level playing field. And, and uh, again, Palestinians, they've been dispossessed of their land. Uh, they, they have no equal rights. It's, you know, it's really frustrating. I can't believe we still have to explain this 70 years later. I can't believe this is still happening 70 years later, right? There's no both sides here. You know, you, 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 you have Palestinians that have been dispossessed of their land. They're living as refugees. They're displaced. They're abused. They have no equal rights. And the Israelis, they have the full backing of the West, the political backing, the backing in the media, the financial backing. You got a guy in riot gear. <laughs> you, you got a, a, a gang of thugs in riot gear coming into a mosque and shooting people with rubber bullets. And then they say, how dare you throw a rock in self-defense? How dare you throw a rock after being tear gassed during prayer, right? It's this whole slave mentality. Like, how dare you defend yourself? Shut up, you terrorist. Be quiet. Sit down and accept the abuse. Or we will call you a terrorist and we will beat you even harder. So every, everything the Palestinians do is wrong. Everything they do is unjustifiable. Everything they do is terrorism. And everything the Israelis do is justifiable. Everything they do is valid, right? Whether they, they, they bomb a UN school or they, they shoot people with rubber bullets during the prayer. It's always, there's always something to justify Israeli behavior. Always. Right? And you see how shameless they are? They, they know they're being filmed. They know that there are people filming this and everybody's seeing this. And they still beat people up anyway. They do it like, yeah, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Israel is still going to get money and weapons from the U.S. We're still going to get protected in the press. What are you going to do about it? That's so disgusting. It's so shameless, really. I want you to take a good look at these images because this is what oppression looks like. This is what colonialism looks like. I don't care what they taught you in school that colonialism finished in 1945. That's bullshit. You're seeing it right now. You're seeing it right now. And they do this. They, they, they keep doing this because they feel emboldened. They know nobody's going to punish them. You think the U.S. is going to sanction Israel? They know that no matter what they do, the Israelis, they will always have Western support. There's no both sides in this. There's, there's one side being oppressed and there's one side doing the oppressing. And this garbage when they say, oh, well, this is happening during Easter and Ramadan and Passover. They are all coinciding and it's increasing the tensions. Get the hell out of here. There, there are no tensions between Muslims and Jews and Christians. There's tensions between colonizers and colonized. Do you understand that? 
uh, uh, Arabs, we have Jews, we have Christians, we have Muslims. There's no problem between us. Colonizers from Europe are the problem. Do you understand that? You're going to act like there hasn't been oppression in Palestine for 70 years, right? What, what was happening then when, the, when these things weren't coinciding? Ridiculous. The only tension is between colonizers and the colonized. Get that straight. 